Hey, it's Ryan with this week's Mille Lacs Fishing Report. It's mid-August and water temps are in the mid-70s. Starting off with the muskies, muskies are doing typical muskie things for this time of year. There's still guys casting in the weeds. There's going to be a little bit of a transition here coming up, if not right now, where more fish are being caught off the rocks. And there's also quite a few guys out trolling. Let's start off with the casting. What I would be looking for right now is clean green cabbage. You know, a lot of times this time of year, you're going to roll up into cabbage beds and notice that there's a lot of moss on the weeds. And typically when I see that, I just move along to a different bed. It just is, doesn't seem as productive when there's moss on those weeds. So look for a greener, cleaner green cabbage at this time. Uh, good depths to find that are going to be 10 to 14 feet of water. Try to find the deeper weed lines in the bays and such. As far as rocks go, what I would do is look out for rock piles that are in that 6 to 12 foot range, topping out in that 6 to 12 foot range. Um, I cast the rocks a little bit different than I cast the weeds. Typically when I go to the rock piles, I'll, I'll fish a lot of the same baits, be it bucktails or topwaters or glide baits. But on the rocks, I'll also throw crankbaits too. And uh, one of my favorite crankbaits is just a little four inch slammer. It's an excellent fish catcher. It's a small bait. It has little hooks on it. So you either have to change out the hooks or back down on the drag once you get the hook set into the fish. But they're an excellent fish catcher. They're a deep diver. So what I like to do is bang them off the bottom. And uh, it provokes reactions out of, you know, sluggish fish at this time. As far as the weed line bite goes, not much changes there. Uh, bucktails are probably my go-to at this time. I use both larger and smaller bucktails, whether it be the double 10, such as a cowgirl, or something smaller, such as a number 8 Meps Marabou. Either one of those will work fine. But uh, pay attention to your conditions. If you have a bright, sunny day, go with some brighter colors. If you have a cloudy day, overcast, or it's morning or evening, low light, go to something a little bit darker. And don't be afraid to fish the bucktails fast. A lot of times that'll get to f get fish to react when they're acting a bit sluggish. Talk about the musky trolling bite. Not much changes with that this time of year either. Throughout the summer, you're gonna hear about guys going out to the flats. They troll fast, four to six miles an hour, and they troll large baits, 10 inches and up. Uh, a few baits that are productive are baits such as headlocks, matlocks, believers, plows, any of those will work well at this time, but troll them fast, cover water. If you see any any pieces of structure out there that have a lot of bait on them, you know, maybe give those an extra pass or two, but just put your time in and uh, eventually you'll connect. Moving on to the walleye bite, we had a pretty big cold front come through earlier this week. That made it tough for the day after, but uh, since then we've actually been doing pretty decent in the evenings. Um, a couple notes that I would make is if you're going out during the day and it's slick calm, bright sun, you know, really beautiful weather, but not really a walleye chop, what I would do is fish a little more aggressively a couple different ways. One way of doing it is trolling lead core, pulling little baits down deep, out in deeper water, such as the basin, the flats, or the gravel bars. Generally, I'm going to be fishing those, you know, 28 to 32 feet of water. You can troll the edges, you can troll points. Um, keep an eye out for bait while you're doing that. You definitely want some activity around when you're trolling and try to find some fish too, you know, use your electronics, look for bait, look for fish and troll through them. It's a great way of covering a lot of water this time of year. And since the baits are moving fast, you can get reactions out of the fish during the middle of the day. Another way of fishing, if you don't have the lead core setups is to power cork. And if you're not familiar with power corking, all power corking is, is it's a means of using your electronics and a little heavier duty bobber setup in conjunction to find fish and drop baits right on top of them. So with the power cork, generally what I do is I use a larger bobber and a heavier sinker, like a half ounce barrel sinker. And I use my electronics to drive around and locate fish. A lot of times this will be on the edges of flats, it will be on transitions on gravel bars, or it will be on deep rock pile edges. But I drive around until I mark fish, and then what I do is as soon as I mark the fish on the graph, I throw the bobber right over the back of the boat and try to put that bobber right on their nose. 
It's a great way of catching fish at this time. You can mark fish that might be slightly off the bottom on your electronics. A lot of times those are your more active fish. You can cover a lot of water quickly and you can move around and find more active, aggressive fish during the daytime hours. As far as the morning and evening bite goes, there's definitely walleyes pushing back in shallow again, and I somewhat suspect that a lot of walleyes stayed in shallow all season. I moved out deeper and fished deeper fish over the last few weeks, but what I noticed is the first time I came back into the shallows, 10, 12 feet of water, I was catching them right away. So definitely check your shallower spots at 8, 10, 12 feet of water. Give those a try in the morning and evening. Bobber and a leech is a great way to catch them. Check those out. There's fish in there. They're moving back in again if they maybe never moved out at all. The other thing I would look for is deeper rock piles anywhere from 17 to 24 feet of water. I've been noticing fish up on those. Some days they're in there thicker than others, but what I definitely noticed as a pattern lately is transitions. So whether it's the deeper rocks transitioning to gravel, or in some spots I've noticed some of the rocks have a rock sand transition, wherever you find those transitions seems to be the sweet spot on the rock piles. So keep an eye out for those. Bobber fish those in the mornings and evenings, or if you have an overcast, windy day, something such as we have going on right behind me right now. Those are great times to go fish bobbers and leeches on the rocks. On to the smallmouth bite. As I mentioned earlier, earlier this week we had uh, quite the cold front move through. We had rain, we had a little bit of falling temperatures going on. And the first day of that, it was a little bit tougher. We were catching big fish in my boat that day, but we weren't getting a lot of bites. We had quite a few fish over four pounds. So it all in all, it was a good day, but uh, we just weren't getting the bites that we normally did. Now, the next day and the day after, we, uh, we did really well on the bass and we were catching all sizes. I noticed a couple different baits working well. It seemed like when the conditions were a little bit tougher and you didn't notice any activity especially at the surface lately I've been seeing bass coming up and feeding on little minnow fry up at the surface when I haven't been noticing that I've been doing better on dragging baits such as tubes ned rigs little worms dragged on the bottom very slow that's been producing for me especially on windier overcast days when I'm noticing that it's getting calmer even on high sun days if you look around and see bass coming up and feeding at the surface, even if it's not a lot, just one here and one there, I've been throwing the spy bait more and we've been doing pretty well on that also. So between those two baits, we've been doing really well. The third bait that has also been producing fish fairly well for me is the little swim baits, little three inch swim baits. What I like to do with those this time of year, it's a little different than how I fish them in the spring. But I take those swim baits and I find larger rocks and larger rock structures and I cast them out and try to get them to deflect off the cover. And that's an excellent way of provoking a reaction out of fish and it's a great way to catch big fish at this time also. As far as colors go on the bait, if you're dragging bottom, can't beat green pumpkin, just works day in and day out. If you're fishing more minnow style baits such as a swim bait or the spy bait, go to something with more of just a minnow color, whether it be whites or something a little perchy looking, either of those will work fine. As far as depths and structures to find the smallmouth, I would say the real big keys are right now is to find large rock. Depth isn't as big of a factor I'm noticing as it is just finding the correct structure. So look for larger boulders, look for larger rock structures, points, spines, that sort of thing, and uh, fish them thoroughly. The second thing is, is depth, and if I had to try to narrow it down to a depth, I would say somewhere in that 10 to 12 foot range, but I've been catching fish as shallow as 3 feet of water, and I've been catching fish all the way out to close to 30 feet of water. So depth doesn't seem nearly as important as finding the correct structure, but if you want a starting point, 10 to 12 feet of water is a good starting point. Hey, I hope you have a great weekend, and good luck fishing.